I'm Jim Greenwood, President and CEO of Bio, and with me is Don Joseph, who is the CEO of Bio Ventures for Global Health, which is an organization that actually Bio helped create uh, several years ago. Uh, the reason that we did that was because we understand that uh, in, in the neglected, in the, in the developing world, there are neglected diseases that, um, that kill and shorten the lives of millions of people, uh, and for whom uh, there are not much hope right now in terms of uh, treatments and cures. And we recognize that the, the, the marketplace is not necessarily drawing the, 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 the developed companies, uh, the companies in the developed world, into, into studying those diseases. So BioVenture for Global Health is all about trying to figure out how do we apply the scientific expertise and capability of American biopharmaceutical companies and European biopharmaceutical companies to the East End of the Police. And uh, in furtherance of that, BioVenture for Global Health has recently come out with a report called Developing New Drugs and Vaccines for Neglected Diseases of the Poor. So, Don, what did you, what did you find out? So, thanks, Jim. Uh, we found a couple of interesting things. Let me mention why we wrote the report uh, first, and I'll tell you some interesting findings. This report is built off of our Global Health Primer, which tracks the R&D pipeline for neglected tropical diseases worldwide. And building from that, we decided to look at who is actually participating in the neglected tropical disease research. Because it's so important to be able to track the use of resources and success, uh, and that has not been done before. So, in two respects, we decided to bring out a report that would identify the groups that are participating in global health, and at the same time establish a baseline so that we can compare year over year, period over period, to see how much progress we're making. We found some very interesting results as a result of this work. Uh, the first being that over 40% of the R&D pipeline projects have a biotech partner which is very exciting and reinforces the notion that innovation comes from the biotech sector. So we were very pleased to see that kind of participation coming uh, from the industry and the, the sector itself. So uh, the, the uh, positive news is that a very substantial portion of the work that's being done in the book is, is, is being done uh, by biotech companies, small, probably small for the most part, small and medium size. Um, the challenge is that a very small percentage of those biotech companies are involved. This is the result. So it means there's a, to me that there's a lot of opportunity. And to the extent that this report and the subsequent report that PDG is working on um, can help the, the NGOs working on those local diseases to understand the opportunities to partner with biotech companies. And biotech companies can understand how they could play a role in this. How there is a business model for them to meet. Uh, to, to apply their, their expertise to these uh, neglected diseases might, uh, might um, really increase the participation by the power of the industry and have some really impressive results in terms of um, reducing the, the, the pain and the death of these diseases. That's exactly right, Jane. There is a huge opportunity here for biotech to play an even greater role in solving these certain problems. Working with the PPP sector, for example, product development partnerships, who are also engaged in about 40% of the projects worldwide. So, uh, and there are partnership statistics in there that would show you uh, the level at which these groups are working together. Uh, so the ability to measure and track that progress over time uh, should help us do a better job. Yeah. It's a great opportunity for, for the neglected disease community, for the global health community, a great opportunity for the public. So we great progress. Thanks very much.